In this problem, we are finding sides of special right triangles. And these special right triangles are that 45, 45, 90 triangle and the 30, 60, 90 triangle. These are triangles that pop up a lot in geometry problems. So we memorize the ratios of their sides. In a 30, 60, 90, the shortest side, if the shorter side is one, the hypotenuse is always twice as long as that. And the other leg is always square to three times that um, side. In a 45, 45, 90, two of the sides, if that's, uh, those two sides are one, then the hypotenuse is square root of two. So whatever this side is, you'd multiply it by the square root of two to get the hypotenuse. So let's take a look at these uh, triangles over here and what we need to do to solve for the sides. Uh, in the first one, we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And what I like to do is sort of draw a little border here. And inside, we have the numbers from the world of the problem. On the outside, I'm going to put these ideal ratios or unit ratios, the 1, the 1, and the square root of 2. So those are the sides. I know I've got it right because the square root of 2 goes with the hypotenuse, and this is the hypotenuse. And at this point, you might be able to jump ahead and see what the answer is. You might say, well, I know this side is is the one side, and I've got a six there. So whatever that one side is, I'm just going to multiply it by the square root of two to get the hypotenuse, and that's what we're looking for. So you might jump forward and say the answer has got to be six times the square root of two. If you did that, you'd be right. Uh, but if that's not immediately apparent, the procedure that's always going to work for any of these problems uh, is to set up a proportion. So I'm going to take the six and call it uh, a proportional to the one. So let's say the six and the one in a ratio. So six is to one as, and now I have to be careful here. I've got the number from the world of the problem on top. So I want to do the same thing for this side. So I'm going to put H here because that's from the world of the problem. And then I'm going to put this from the world of the ideal ratio on the bottom. So six is to one as H is to the square root of two. So there's a proportion. We can solve this proportion by cross multiplying. So one times h is h, and six times the square root of two is six times the square root of two. And there you have it. If you jumped ahead to that answer, this shows that you were right. Sometimes the answer might not be as obvious as in this 45, 45, 90 triangle. Uh, let's take a look at this 30, 60, 90. Again, the first thing I'm going to do is separate the two worlds and write in my, my ratios. So 1, 2, and square root of 3. I did that backwards. 1, 2, and the square root of 3. Hypotenuse is the 2 side. The other leg is the square root of 3 side. Now, I think I'm going to set up a ratio or a proportion here because it is a little harder to see exactly what to do. So I'm going to say a is to 1. So a is to 1. I've got the world of the problem on top and the ideal ratios on the bottom. So we'll do the same over here as 8 is to the square root of 3. And then we can cross multiply. So 1 times 8 is 8, and a times the square root of 3 goes over there. And then we would need to divide by the square root of 3 to solve for a. And I get a equals 8 times or over the square root of 3. We can't stop there, even though it might look like we're done, because we have a radical on the bottom of a fraction. And mathematicians don't like that for many uh, valid historical reasons. So let me just put this up here where we have a little more room. If you get to the point where you have a radical on the bottom of a fraction, you need to do something called rationalizing the denominator, which is really just a way to get that radical sign out of there. And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply it by the square root of 3 on the bottom. Because if I multiply the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, that's like squaring it. And I just get 3 on the bottom. So the radical sign would go away. But we have to do the same thing on top. So I'm multiplying this fraction by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. That's really just the number 1. It's a form of the number 1. So it doesn't actually change the value of what we started with. So when we do this, when we multiply fractions, we multiply across the top and across the bottom. On the top, I just get 8 times the square root of 3. And on the bottom, I get the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which is 3. And that is our exact answer for that one.
So that is a little bit of work with finding sides in special triangles with exact answers.